Hi, today we've got a car diagnostic tool to take a look at. This one is the Autofix D1 Lite. And you might not have heard of Autofix before, but they are a brand of Autel. So when we power it up, you'll see there's a lot of similarities between the GUI on this and an Autel branded device. Now on the back, it does actually say powered by Autel. So I think they're all part of the same company, but this one's aimed a little bit more at the lower cost market. So this one is the D1 Lite, and the pricing for this is somewhere around 330 to 360 pounds, depending on where you buy it from. I will put links in the description down below. And this is kind of the lowest in the D1 range. There's also the Autofix D1, and then the Autofix D1 Pro. And the difference really between those are some of the advanced features. So unfortunately, this one doesn't have bi-directional controls, but it has all of the other features on these scan tools. So you can read live data. There's lots of resets and adaptations that you can set up on this tool. And then obviously, there's a very wide variety of vehicles that we can connect to. So what you get in the box, because it does come in a hard case, which is nice, uh, you get an AC adapter. This one's the UK one, so it fits in our uh, UK sockets. It just has a USB port at the bottom, uh, so a 5 volt output. Um, it comes with a USB cable to USB-C because this is a USB-C tablet and it also came um, curiously with this adapter here so I think this is intended for allowing you to connect this device to a physical LAN connection although this is not actually mentioned in the user manual but basically uh, for signing in and updates and that kind of thing obviously you need an internet connection to here uh, you can use the Wi-Fi that's built into this tablet, but you can also plug it into an Ethernet port here if you'd rather do that. And then you'll notice we've got the dongle for connecting to the diagnostic port. So this one is indeed a Bluetooth um, connection between this and the device, which is really nice because that means you can plug this into your uh, diagnostic port and you can carry this around the vehicle. So if you're trying to diagnose something, you can see live data or look at what's going on or um, read codes while you're under the hood for example or underneath the vehicle so that makes things really handy for use. So the tablet itself is an Android 9 tablet with the custom Autel software running on here. It's got a pretty decent 7 inch screen as you can see, decent resolution 1280 by 800 pixels and it's got um, various connectivity on the top here so you can see we've got USB-C charging port, we've got USB-C on the go and we've also got an SD card slot and it does has, have Wi-Fi 5 built in so that you can do all of your updates or upload data uh, through that wireless connection. On the back here, it's got a camera with a flash and it's also got two speakers. So you can take photos on here, uh, either if you're taking a photo for a customer or if you're taking something apart. It allows you to take a before picture so you can remember how to put it together again. But the unit itself has quite a decent user interface and it's pretty responsive. The only thing I'll mention with this is because of the way the Autel software works, you do need to sign in to be able to use it. So you have to create an account, and then you get free updates for two years, and when those updates run out, you can still use all of the functionality on the device. You just can't update it any further, but obviously you can update your subscription and update it for another year, for example, if you want to still use it and get the latest updates there. Here is the dongle that plugs into the diagnostic port, and a fairly neat feature on this is it does actually have a little torch built in, so you can press the button here. And this is particularly useful on some vehicles where the port is hidden underneath the dashboard. You can't quite see uh, which way around to connect it in and that kind of thing, because it's quite dark, so you can quickly just shine the torch and see where you need to insert it. Now, it does have a USB-C port for charging the battery for that torch, and it does have an indicator light so you can see what it's doing, whether it's connected to the vehicle and whether it's connected to the tablet. So it looks like there are some updates available. So I'll quickly install those and then we'll go out to the vehicle and have a look at how it actually works. Right, so the unit is powered up. We've also got the dongle plugged in to the diagnostic port down there. And when we connect to the vehicle, we go to the VCI manager, which is on the front page just here. And first of all, you can do a update. So if there's one available, I think in this case, now that we've updated it, it should be at version 1.2, which is the latest. But this is where you manage the connections to the external devices. So we've got VCI update. Uh, now that the update is complete, we want to go to VCI Bluetooth. Now you'll also notice there's one that says BAS BT. That's for the battery tester unit because 
as an add-on to this, there's a little dongle that you can buy that you plug directly onto the battery terminals and it allows you to do battery testing. So similar to those little modules that I've reviewed before where you just connect the two terminals on, do a battery test, it tells you how many cold cranking amps, the health of the battery, the internal resistance, etc. This one uses the tablet as a graphical user interface and it allows you to do some detailed tests. Unfortunately, I don't have that dongle, uh, but this is where you can do things like uh, test the battery, look at the parameters of the battery, log the voltage of the battery. You can also do a test where the battery is outside of the vehicle and then also you've got the things to do with the vehicle where if you change the battery it can reset the parameters for the battery management system so it resets the state of charge the health of the battery and that kind of thing so that's that um, there is also what's called the maxi viewer um, which allows you to have a look at the functions that are available for any vehicle that you might be trying to talk with so for example we've got a Ford Mondeo here and even if you haven't got the unit connected uh, you can set the Ford model, uh, sorry the car model, the system, uh, you know the engine that you've got installed. So if we click on here we've got the 2.2 diesel stage 5 and then on this screen it shows you what it's actually able to do. So for example on the ABS system we can read details about the ABS controller, we can erase codes, look at live data and read codes and that's the same pretty much for every module on here but also some of them have additional things like on the PCM we've got some active tests which is a little bit different from the bi-directional controls but we can do some active tests where you actually uh, get it to do something or learn new data that kind of thing same with the alarm um, and there's some additional things here so special functions like um, setting up the alarm looking at past alarm codes um, remote keyless entry uh, resetting the battery management system. We've also got some things to do with the driver's seat module and cruise control and all that kind of stuff. So if you're replacing modules, you can actually do most of that with this tool. The only thing that you can't do are the bi-directional controls. For example, if you've got a misfire, you want to shut down cylinder one and see if it's cylinder one that's causing the problem. That's something that you can't do with this slightly more basic tool. You can do it with the D1, but not with the D1 Lite. Uh, and then on here, uh, we've got Data Manager, which is just where you might store some of your information. So uh, you've got a history of all the vehicles you've connected with. Uh, you can set up details about your workshop or about your details so that when you print a PDF of what you've done on the vehicle, you've got all that information there. You can store some images and that kind of thing. So that's where you uh, review all of your data. Uh, service here is where we have all of the built-in functions. So this is um, all of the functions available um, to this system. So quite comprehensive actually. This is where some of them um, skimp and only allow you to have access to like four, four or five functions, that kind of thing. This one's got, uh, I think it's about 30 or something like that. So we've got things like the oil reset, tire pressure monitoring system. You can reset that. Battery management system, you can reset that. You can do the ABS brake bleeding system. So, um, you know, instead of uh, having to pressurise the system, we can use the ABS motor to actually do the bleeding of the um, system. We've got injector coding, we've got things to do with the suspension. Um, if you've got programmable seats, then it allows you to do some of the learning on there. Uh, headlight levelling, so on this system we've got the Zen and headlights. Uh, you can do a course adjustment with the knobs on the top, but to set the median position, uh, use the headlight learning function. So lots and lots of functions on here which are really useful. Not all of them are applicable to every single vehicle, so you might click on one and it says it's not available on this car, uh, but loads of functions there which are really quite useful for servicing your vehicle. And then finally, the most important part is the diagnostics. So this is where it connects to the vehicle. It's already detected my Ford Mondeo here, read out the VIN, and we just click on connect here, and it will go through into the diagnostics. So just take a moment for that initial connection to the vehicle, even though it read the VIN extremely quickly. Uh, but then we get to the main menu and then we've got diagnosis here. And this is where we can communicate with the various units in the car. So we can do an auto scan to see what's connected to the various CAN bus. And it will go through and try and talk to every single module on all of the buses available on the diagnostic port. And then it will come back and tell you if you've got any faults. Now, some of these are faults that I've had. Um, since the vehicle is brand new that I can't get rid of, there was something here to do with the programming of the instrument panel cluster and that kind of thing. But we'll look at these in a moment once it's finished going through every module and reading to see if there's any faults. 
So now it's finished scanning all the modules, it's put any of the units with fault codes at the top of the list so we can quickly look at those. Uh, so we've got something to do with the instrument panel cluster, one with the body control module and two with the door modules. Now I think these are just to do with the fact that we've got some LEDs installed in the puddle lights. Uh, but the general user interface here is the same for every module. So we've got EC information, that just tells you about the um, module that we're talking to, and then we can read the codes. Just takes a moment to communicate with it. And yeah, it's just saying that the puddle light output is incorrect. Basically, it's expecting a bigger load than a small LED that we've got installed. Uh, and then we've got, uh, so erase codes we could do, but it would just come back because this fault is continuous. And then we've got live data, so this is really useful for diagnostics of a module. So, for example, if the indicator wasn't working properly on the driver's door module, we didn't see the little repeater light on the wing mirror, we could scroll down to um, the turn signals, for example. At the moment it says off, but if I start indicating right... It says right off, right off, right off. So that would allow you to know that the door module is getting the correct signal from the body control module. So if your indicator's not working, it's to do with either the wiring between the door module and the indicator light, or it's a problem with the lamp itself. Uh, but you can see here, we've got all of the details of every live stream that's available on that door module, which is really useful. And this is the same for any of the modules in the vehicle. So we just have to connect to that module and then we can look at all of the live data available. So that's uh, the door module here. And each of these modules all has a very similar user interface once you click on that module. So for example, the PCM here, which is the engine management unit, we've got the information. Uh, if it had some fault codes, we could read them here. And if we had faults, but we'd fix them, we could click on erase codes. We've also got live data for this module, give it a moment to communicate. And then we've got all of the PIDs for that module. So we can look at these and they update about once per second. Now there is a big list here of items. Um, so if you wanted to only look at a certain range of them, you can put the little tick in there. We'll go through and we can pick just a few of them out and then we can just click show selected and then we have a much smaller list to go through. Um, so if you had uh, a whole bunch that you're interested in, you don't have to keep scrolling through the entire list. Now we can also plot some of these on a graph, for example. Uh, so let's look at these four together and we click on graph merge and it plots it on the graph here, each with their own individual scale and it allows you to see what's going on in real time. Uh, it's not fast enough to do some diagnostics. You would need an oscilloscope directly to look at some details, but the refresh rate of about once per second is enough to understand what's going on in most circumstances. You can get it to freeze the graph if you want to look at some detail quickly, uh, and then you can click resume. Uh, but basically, you have the ability here to look at any of the live data um, very easily. Now, we were just in diagnosis. That's where we're able to read live data, read codes, array codes, that kind of thing. Then if we go back to the main menu, we've also got things like popular functions for the vehicle. So this might be things like injector coding, uh, resetting injectors, resetting the battery management, tire pressure, all those things. So popular ones for uh, the particular vehicle. We've also got the service functions. Now this is um, a really important area where we have some special functions available to us that weren't available on other menus, but also aren't available to a lot of tools. So for example, if we go to powertrain here, we should be able to do a forced DPF regeneration, for example. So click on service functions, PCM. And yeah, we can reset the learned values. We can do a static forced regeneration. And this will actually tell the vehicle to do a forced regeneration, increase the revs and complete it until the DPF is empty. We can reset and um, program new injectors into the PCM, uh, reset the gas temperatures, all those kind of things. So this is where we've got some very special functions that you can't normally do with the basic code readers. And then just at the top here, we've got return to menu. 
Uh, we've got the settings, so if you want to change the units or change how the unit works, we can do those here. You can print directly from this to a networked printer, and if we were in the uh, auto scan mode, we'd actually be able to create a report and send it as a PDF or even store it on Autel Cloud. And you can also do screenshots from here, save it as a, a PF, uh, PNG file. And that's about it with this unit. So we can go back. I think it will, um, if we go back here and disconnect, it will give us a warning to remember to remove the dongle from the OBD2 port. So yeah, make sure you've removed the VCI. And then we go back to the main screen. So that's the Autofix D1 Lite, and it's certainly a very capable tool at a fairly decent price point. Now, if you do need those bi-directional controls, expect to pay a couple of hundred pounds more for the D1 as opposed to the D1 Lite. And then I think there are two other versions, the Elite and Max, which are more rugged tablet devices designed for more professional use. But the D1 and the D1 Lite certainly should do for most people. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any thoughts and comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. I'll put a link to this item in the description as well. And until next time, thanks for watching.